Um, yes, so um, I'm Stella Wickelman. I work for, the, for MOLA and have been involved in a lot of the tideway sites that we've been um, working on recently. Um, um, this is a map of all the tideway sites um, we were working on in London. Um, we have to date done various bits of watching briefs and evaluations on sites along the Thames. Um, I'll be focusing my talk on the recent Chambers Wharf excavations that took place earlier this year. Um, it's circled here in red, um, site 17, and is situated in Bermondsey, um, just east of Tower Bridge. And this is the site, um, an aerial view of the site, as um, it was before the work started on the site. Um, and this is already, I'll be going straight into the findings that we um, encountered during our excavations of the shaft area. Um, this is an early image of the prehistoric landscape in the area of the site. Um, the area of the site is circled in red, and it shows that the site was low, lying in low-lying marshland, um, just north and west of um, Bermondsey Ayat. Um, this is an image of the prehistoric riverscape as, as, as drawn by an artist. It's, it's located a bit further um, west, near the ta uh, near London Bridge area, but you have to imagine the riverscape looking very similar at Chambers Wharf at the time. Um, this is... Oh, I've got the wrong presentation there. Anyway. Um, this is an early, mid-17th century map of the area showing um, wharf buildings on, on the site at the time. Um, and um, this is a later map. Um, it shows the area of the site um, um, bound by um, three mariner stairs in the east and um, the Neckinger on the, on, in the west. I'm sorry, I've got the wrong, I've, I've changed the PowerPoint presentation a bit, so I have to make it up uh, as I go along. <laughs> because I actually organized the slides um, differently to make it a bit more, um, un yeah, a bit better to understand. This is um, a later one, so I'm just doing the map regression now and then come to the findings instead of using the maps within the, um, the talk. Um, so this is a later map um, from 1862 to 95. That shows the area um, of the site at the, at the time um, um, occupied by granaries. Um, here, this is pretty much the outline of the, of the, um, the Chambers Wharf site. And this is, these are images of the site, um, of, the, of, of the buildings that were found on the site um, before they were demolished. I think this year was, uh, yeah, the, these pictures were taken um, 10 years ago. Um, and this is the area of the site um, before we started going in, as we were still, um, as we were getting ready to excavate the shaft area. So um, the works that were that took place on the site were um, started in 2014 already. Um, we, we started with foreshore surveys, um, monitoring test bits along the foreshore, and doing um, desk-based studies. Then in 2014-15, I was down with a team um, doing an, e a, an evaluation on the site to assess um, the, poten the arche uh, archaeological potential of the site. Um, and this is one of the trenches you can see here in the middle. Then another more thorough survey was undertaken in 2016 and the recording of the river wall. Um, then in 2016 as well, the coffer dam um, was built on the site, on, 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 in front of the foreshore, and Mola was monitoring these works as well, as well as obstruction clearance in 2017 on the site. Um, and then 2018, we were on site from, I think we started around March, April this year, and worked up to um, July, I think, beginning of August, we were on site, actually excavating the area of the main tunnel um, drive shaft. 
So this is a picture of the shaft um, prior to the excavation. You can see here, this is the area of the shaft. Um, and the coffer dam is already in place, which would previously been occupied by the foreshore. And um, the groundworks are just starting. And this is a picture of um, the shaft after we finished the excavations on site. Um, we went down about six meters below ground level. Um, and this is now the machines taking over um, where we encountered the natural gravels. So and now I'm starting with the, the archaeological works we have undertaken. Um, this is just an early sketch we, we have done on site. We're still in very early stages of, um, of um, analyzing the, the, the sites and its findings. It's only been a month that we've been back, been back on site. Um, so I haven't got any digitized maps or images of the structures we found so far. Uh, from that hand-drawn sketch, you can already see that the area of the shaft is quite busy with what we think at least probably about eight or nine phases of occupation and, and, and buildings on the site. Um, I'll start with the earliest finds we had. Um, they are from what we think at the moment, we've not had a look at the finds, we think um, we had a prehistoric channel running um, through the western part of the site. You can see the archaeologists here working and the geoarchaeologists are putting tins in. Um, to um, the, the, the channel had a lot of brushwood in it and we also find bits of pottery which we think are prehistoric in date but haven't been looked at by specialists at the moment, as yet. Um, then sealing the gravels and the, this potential um, prehistoric channel um, where up to two meters of um, alluvium, um, which were covering the northern part of the shaft area. And within the, the, the alluvium, we found um, human remains. In total, three bodies articulated. Um, probably, again, um, we are still at the early stages of trying to understand what they are, where they come from. We know they're adult males, and um, we, um, we don't know how they ended up there, um, whether they were, they, they drowned, they were, we couldn't find any obvious grave cuts, so we don't think they were actually buried there. Um, however, there's discussion about it, um, whether a body would survive as a whole articulated um, within the river with um, all the water movement. We also found um, one skull, this articulated skull, which was well um, polished and probably would have been moved by the river onto side, so probably came from somewhere else. Um, um, that belonged to a female adult. That's all we know about it so far. Interesting about one of the articulated bodies is um, this is a picture of him. Um, lying on his um, on, a, on his front um, arms, it doesn't look like a burial position to me. The interesting thing about it is actually we found boots on him. It's not very clear on the picture, but we found leather remains that went up to the knee. Um, so he was de he was wearing leather boots. Again, we think they might be medieval in date, and we think probably all the all, all the bodies belong to the medieval period. Um, the boots seem to suggest that anyway. Um, they were lifted by conservators and are at the moment being analyzed. <coughs> so, and now I, um, I'll come to the first structures that we found on site. Um, they are very likely to be from the medieval period between the 11th and 13th century and were situated in the eastern part of the shaft. Um, you can see here um, they, they, um, they were part of a bigger structure, potentially a building. We don't know as, uh, at the moment whether uh, it was um, what the building was used for, but it was definitely a larger structure. Um, some of the timbers have moved, probably in antiquity already, maybe through floodings or storms. However, some of the timbers are still actually in its, in its original place. So you can see here, one of those timbers is still anchored to the ground and um, was formed of two planks, probably belonging to a wall of some sort. You would have to imagine the river being um, on this side, so you're looking um, south at the moment, the river being on this side, 
the, maybe a front wall of a building here, and then um, behind it you've got a base plate with mortises, um, again anchored on one end um, in place here. Um, it looks like it was sitting in a cut, so maybe um, it was part of a, of, a, of a basement or some um, lower structure of a um, large building. Um, yeah. Associated with it and probably contemporary with it, um, we found a large north-south um, running drain. You can see it here nicely. Um, it, it, it was formed of three segments of dug out um, half logs. You can see here running down again towards the Thames, which would have been on the bottom of the picture. This is again um, viewing south. Um, it was embedded in a chalk layer at the bottom, which at the moment we think um, would have been part of the foreshore at the time. So the, the two um, higher segments would have been within the land side, and the lowest segment would have been on the, on the waterfront. Um, here you can also see, that's quite interesting, that's one of the lids that would have been on top of the drain. So we think it's part of a drain sluice. If it's in association with a building, obviously the, the, there's always the suggestion that it might be part of a tidal mill of some sort. At the moment we haven't got any evidence that would suggest that there was a mill on the site. Um, but we're at our early stages and hopefully maybe some of the finds will give us a better clue of what it actually was. Here you can see this loose the drain again. Tony's just splashing water on it, one of our archaeologists, showing how it would have worked. <laughs> and um, in the bottom corner, you've got um, some of the pottery, which we think is medieval Shelley ware, that was found within the, um, the, the chalk um, bedding. <laughs> Then, um, on top of the drain, we found a, a thick layer of yellow clay, which seemed very sterile, um, up to, I think, three meters high at the very southern egg, um, section. I don't have any photos at the moment. We're still working on digitizing our sections that we're drawing. This is a reconstruction um, of the Bermondsey Wall as it was found at um, Bermondsey Wall West, which is just west of our site, Chambers Wharf. And this is a reconstruction of what we think we've got as well. The, 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 the clay we found on top of the sluices seem, seem to be on the same alignment and suggest it would be formed part of this mud wall. Um, you can see here, this is the river side on, the, on this side, and that would have been held in place by some sort of wattle. We also find, found what will work at the, at the base of the clay, and then we found this clay slope as well. However, we didn't find any supports at the back. Um, this might be just because the shaft, um, the, the, the limit of excavation um, was too close, and we probably, at the moment, we think um, at Bermondsey Wall West, they found the back of the Bermondsey Wall. We think we might have found the front here, up to here somewhere. Um, yeah, here you can see, this is already, this is later remains, so the, the next phase of um, construction we, we're finding is from the 16th century. Uh, you can see the clay, the very sterile yellow clay of the Bermondsey <coughs> Wall in the background. This revetment um, or river wall would have stood quite high up on the Bermondsey Wall um, and further back to where the sleuth and the medieval um, structure stopped. So that's quite interesting that it's actually going backwards again and onto the land side. Um, yeah, here you can see um, the, the planks being cleaned up. The planking is mainly from ship timbers, um, very likely to be from the 16th century, and they were, um, they were found on the, on the same alignment as the picture I showed you earlier. So we think this, uh, again, this structure would have run completely across the shaft area in the, in the southern part of the site. Um, and then I'm already coming to the 17th century remains, which were um, the, not the most interesting, but the, there, were, there was at least five phases of it in a very short um, time frame. So you have, um, I think we've got four or five phases, I'll show you in a minute, of um, 
riverfront structures, wall, uh, river walls, revetments, and things. Um, in a very short time frame, starting from about the middle of the shaft, which is around here, moving, encroach, encroaching into the river by about 15 meters till we get to the last revetment we found in the, in the shaft area. Um, so yeah, this is a this, this is a, um, a sketch, Holler's panorama. It shows the area of the site in the in the mid 17th century, um, already fully built up and um, with a lot of traffic on the river, um, lots of wolf buildings on site. Um, yeah, this is the, the the area of the site in more detail. And then here I've got um, a reconstruction drawing um, of the riverfront in the city, which obviously um, Bermondsey Wall wouldn't have been as built as sophisticated and probably not as big wouldn't have contained big buildings like these, but you can see clearly, for example, here, the um, Timber River walls, which, which we found similar at Bermondsey Wall. And yeah, so this is the first um, substantial river wall we found, dating to probably the early um, 17th century, running across the middle of the site, pretty much on the same alignment as where the Bermondsey walls would have stopped. Um, also, it seemed to be, it, it was formed of two parts, one in the east, one in the west, and had a gap in the middle where the sleuths ran. And we think maybe at the moment that even though the sleuth is a few hundred years earlier, might have still respected it and maybe integrated it at some, of some sort um, at the time already. Interesting as well about this revetment is, it's mainly um, made of reused chip timbers. This one being the most exciting, circled in red here, um, it had a really intrinsically carved um, flower motif on all sides. So you have to imagine that was just a, a, one of the posts used for the revetment. Um, clearly would have been um, visible of some sort before. It's decorated on all four sides. Um, it probably was upstanding at the time. Um, we don't know, we haven't done any research on it at the moment. We think it's probably early 17th century, century in date and would have probably been freestanding in a building or a ship. Um, yeah, and then the next structure that we encountered that was truncating the earlier river wall um, is, is, is a big um, waterfront structure with um, an inlet in it. You can see here, this is the eastern corner of the inlet. This, this would have been the riverfront here on this side. And then the inlet running north-south um, onto land um, here. Um, interesting as well, you can see this is a picture looking north now, so towards the river. Um, you can see um, the revetments on both sides, um, the sloping inlet where um, vessels would, would have been pushed up and then at a later phase, probably, um, a tank and a drain um, were built, so the, the inlet was reused of some sort. Um, the tank, we don't have any evidence for um, what it was used for as such at the moment. Interesting as well is you can see the drain running into the Thames, running down, probably um, discarding wastewater from the, t from the tank. And the, the actual, um, the, the, the pipe was made of an old ship's pump, octagonal in shape with a bore in the middle. Um, so this is still part of the same structure, however, the, um, the west side of it, later blocked off. So this is the inlet, this is still part of the structure. This is a block off of the inlet with a tie back at the back. Here we've got Damien, our timber specialist, looking at boat planking that would have lain on the foreshore, so that probably um, would have been the foreshore level at the time. And um, yeah, so that blockage was um, held in place by a really interesting tie back, which was a rudder, a ship's rudder, part of a ship's rudder. Um, we've, this is, um, one of our archaeologists um, recording it in situ, and then you can see on the on the left you've got actually two parts of it. So what happened is the the um, 
the ships rather that we found for this phase of construction I just showed you previously um, was one of them. The next ship rudder was actually sealing it, sitting on top of the earlier ship rudder. Whether it's part of the same rudder, we don't know. If it is, it'd be quite interesting because there's reuse of reused things in the next revetment. So they, they would have used the, the river walls, partially probably dismantled them and reused the timbers in the encroaching in the next wall they were building. Um, Yes, and that is the next phase of construction. Um, this one we can date quite clearly, I think, into the mid to late 17th century because we found a lot of kilnware waste from the Rotherhithe pothouse in the dumps behind it. Um, so that, as a fact, is quite interesting. What, what's quite interesting about this um, structure as well is it would have formed part of, um, of a um, half slip so what you're seeing here is a beam. This would have been part of a higher fence, a higher revetment going up. You can see the post there going this way. Then you have a beam, and then you have um, a wall on the other side again. And this beam would have been the top of the half slip where um, vessels could have been pulled in at high tide. Um, yeah, here's the beam from the top with tie backs. You can see the tie backs as well. They're really nicely smoothed on the top. Um, so that would have been your inlet. I think the half slip measured about five meters across. Um, and this, these are the timbers that we found associated with it. So within the half slip, and we found um, gravel layers, which probably were surface layers. Then we found a lot of um, reused ship timbers, possibly from breaking or ship repair taking place on the side. Um, and we also found a lot of corking, tar and, and animal hair and, and um, other things associated with shipbuilding, breaking or um, um, repair on the side. So we're quite, we're quite certain at the moment that this would have been part of a shipyard in the mid, late 17th century. Um, on the side next door at Adler's Wharf excavations, they found a similar half slip. And this is a reconstruction of it. So this shows you how it would have worked. So you've got the big river walls on either side with like a half slip, planking on the base, and then at high tide, um, the vessels could have been pulled up. Um, that half slip was then again blocked off, probably, oops, sorry, probably within 10 to 20 years, all of these, um, revetments are all taking place within the mid to um, late 17th century. So you can see a lot going on and a lot of repairs taking place um, on the site at the time. So this is the half slip now. Again, it's being blocked off by big posts. And then you've got another revetment in front of it again. Um, that revetment, uh, um, I think, is the last phase. Let me just check. Yes. You can see it here really nicely, standing up to two meters tall, so quite impressive when we were working on it. Um, and um, yeah, so we think that was probably late 17th century. It was filled back by about five, 50 centimeter thick puddle clay behind it to actually to, to give it more waterproofing, um, I suspect. Um, here you can see it quite clearly, actually on this picture, you can see the amount of reused ship timbers that were used in, in the construction of, of, of the walls. So you've got here, you've got clinker bit, planking of a part of a boat, um, and a lot of the posts would have been reused ship timbers as well. Um, within the last phase of the 17th century recommend, but actually, um, facing north-south, attached to the last one I showed you, facing north-south, um, we found a really interesting reused ship timber, which had a carving on it, which said the John. Um, what it means <laughs> is at the moment, also it's really degraded at the end, so we're not sure whether, yeah, what it would have said and what it meant at, at the time. But that was one of the uprights that was standing within the revetment, within base plates. Um, yeah, so that was the 16th, 17th century timber structures that we found on site. Now I'm just briefly going to mention um, the later um, 
later structures we had, we had a series of cellars on site dating to the probably early 18th century. You can see the top of them here. Um, here is, they were probably up to one meter standing and backfilled with a lot of slag material and ash. So whether that will give us an indication of what they were originally used for, that would be quite interesting. Um, so that's the height they remained in. <coughs> also interesting, within the base and within the floor of these um, walls, of these cellars, where we found um, two, two barrels, um, probably late, dating to the early 19th century. They were let in the ground and probably used as a, were probably used as, as a soak away to keep the, the cellars dry. Um, and then the very last phase um, of, of um, structures we found, as I mentioned earlier, the granaries, um, we found what we think is status stones, a whole series of status stones on the site, which were probably supporting the granaries, and then a massive circular structure with a central shaft, which we think is a boiler. You can see on, on the map, sorry, it's not very focused, but um, the, this is the area of the site with granaries on it. And you can see that tiny little circle here. And that is mentioned, annotated as a boiler house. So that's probably what we found. And then very last thing outside, actually, the shaft area, um, right next to the modern river, river wall, which, is, which you can see here by the sheet piling from the um, modern sheet piling. In front of it, you've got, um, you had a big brick wall, probably dating to the late 19th century. And in front of that, or built against it, was another timber revetment, probably of similar date, probably a bit earlier. And this is quite interesting as well. It's an elm pipe that was running through the revetment and probably uh, yeah, used as a waste pipe. So that's the, the majority of the structures. Again, as I said, we're still in the very early stages, so I haven't got many pictures of our finds on site at the moment. But here's just a few examples of interesting finds we got on the site. We found a hand auger with a wooden handle and a metal shaft on the side, actually in the alluvium, in, in the clay that was, we think is medieval, but we're not sure how this relates to the auger at the moment. Then we found um, a spade, or you can see here on the left. Um, we also found lots of um, finds associated with ship breaking like, um, and, and, and the nautical history of the site, like we have found ropes, we found a tar brush, lots of corking, as I mentioned. So um, clearly showing the type of industries that would have been um, occupying the site on, at the time. Other interesting finds I've got here, we actually found that in the very early beginning during the evaluation stage, um, was a sundial and um, a ruler which we found during the excavations again. Um, yes, we found also, quite interesting, we found a huge number of musket balls on the site, and that might be because we had Pat, our metal detectorist, we were doing a really good job at finding all the metal finds. Um, we also had a couple of cannonballs, I think, which is quite interesting, and um, coins. We also, even though we didn't really find structural remains from, um, from the the, the earlier periods, um, the, the, we found a Celtic coin, for example, we found some Roman remains, but they are all within the river wash, so probably um, not in situ. Um, yeah, so um, the next phase is, I've told you about all the phases that we ha have done on site already, there's still one more phase to do, and that's the um, air ventilation chamber to the east of the shaft. Um, we already put an evaluation trench in that area and we found another drain and chalk foundations in it. So that'd be quite interesting. Hopefully that give us a bit more understanding of what all the medieval, early medieval remains are, plus additionally all the 17th century and 18th century remains we found in the shaft area.